person's goods. And this is how it's used in the second reading today that we heard from the letter of St. James. Beloved, he said, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. This is the same as the definition that I cited before from the dictionary, where I want to have something that you've got. I wish it was mine, and, and I'm, 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 I'm lusting in my desire for that thing. St. Thomas Aquinas distinguishes this expression of jealousy as what he calls the jealousy of concupiscence. And this is perhaps the most basic form of offense against the ninth and 10th commandments, coveting others and their stuff. But there's a deeper version of offense against those ninth and 10th commandments than the basic expression of the poison of this possessive emotion. And this is where we need to consider the evil fruits of envy. Remember I said, what is jealousy? What is envy? Far worse and more diabolical than being upset or unhappy because of some good that you see of or in another. Envy is not content to simply be upset or unhappy. Envy takes the evil another step. If you allow envy to creep into your heart, you will take the brooding of jealousy even further and actually seek to mar or to destroy the good because you can't have it for yourself. This might be expressed through undermining somebody else because maybe they're better at something than you or maybe talking bad about them behind their back because they're better at something than you or they've got something that you wish you had and somehow you're, you're undermining the seeming advantage that they've got. You might think of the expression, or I should say, if you ever catch yourself saying this, pay attention. If I can't have it, neither can he. If I can't have it, neither can he. If I ever say that, if you ever say that, pay attention, what is going on in your heart? Jesus commands his disciples even to love our enemies and to pray for our persecutors. We're to seek the good of all regardless of whether or not they have sought our good in the first place. Or, as a matter of fact, he says, even if they're seeking our destruction. Envy is diabolical. That is, it's a fruit of the diablo, the devil. Whose disciple would you rather be? The devil seeks to mar or destroy all that is good. So if we allow envy to direct our actions, we're essentially working for him. To be clear, the jealousy of concupiscence is also very bad and can lead you to envy if you allow that poison into your heart. But envy is clearly the more diabolical expression of this disease of the soul, this coveting. Hence, envy is numbered among the deadly sins in our Catholic tradition. Fortunately, there's an antidote. <laughs> Praise God. God himself is more powerful than any sin you could ever commit. God himself is more powerful than any sin you could ever commit. Humbly submitting to him is how we overcome this and any affinity we might have for sin. Surrendering these sins to him and the sacrament of confession is going to be in a, a huge, big first step. Being sustained through our reception of him in the Eucharist. Sometimes, though, even when we've formed, I should say, sometimes though we have formed dispositions, habits, which make us vulnerable to fall back into patterns of our sinful past, sometimes even not long after we've sincerely surrendered 
our past offenses to him in confession. For this reason, it's also important to forge in our hearts the contrary disposition, the contrary motivation to the offense. I mean, we need to replace the bad habit with its opposite, the good habit. And fortunately, Jesus gives us the example for this in today's gospel reading. The disciples, if you remember, had fallen into arguing about who was the greatest in their number. The seeds of jealousy were being sown in their hearts and Jesus gave them an antidote to the sickness that was starting to grow there. What was that antidote? If you remember, it was service. Jesus said to them, if anyone wishes to be first, he must be the last and the servant of all. Now the fact is, everybody, Jesus knows it's hard. I mean, he's asking us to love our enemies, to do good to those who persecute us, even when they are afflicting us. We're not to envy them. We're not to, to, to have this, the same disorder that they, that they might be shooting at us. We're supposed to rise above that. But the fact is that that's exactly how he loves us. That's exactly what he has shown us when he died for us on the cross. He knows it's hard, and so he's given us the church, and he's given us the sacraments. He doesn't just zap us into obedient robots, but he invites our free choice. And so we have to ask ourselves, whose disciple do I choose to be by the way that I live my life each day. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathering now our prayers and petitions, we offer them before God, our loving Father.
Please respond. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis' intentions for September, that all people will embrace the virtue of simplicity in how they live and be good stewards of the resources of this earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and harmony between those nations set against one another, that disputes between persons may be reconciled in charity and goodwill. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that those who administer to the sick may be blessed with the gift of healing and attentiveness to its patient's need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all students and teachers at the beginning of this academic year, that they may grow in knowledge and understanding of how the world works and become wise in how to live in the world in a manner that reflects the moral teachings of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to jealousy and destructive competition among members of our families, that envy and ambition may be replaced with encouragement and service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of the departed, that they may rest in peace of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, with grateful hearts, we stand before you this day and we ask that you hear the prayers we have offered and those that remain in our hearts and answer them according to your will, for we make them through Christ our Lord. Sad. 
satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O oh saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. The mystery of your presence, Lord, Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. 
For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith, Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O 
Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them. As once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, Willa and Leonard, who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may offer one another the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life. 
through Christ our Lord. As, as I'm sure you all remember, or at least would have heard in the, in the announcements today, we've got our, um, what do we call it? Our parish festival, our bazaar, the, the big event <laughs> today. And so uh, just uh, thank you to everybody who had to do all of the stuff that has to happen in order to be able to make that happen. Thank you to all the volunteers who are helping out with it today. And I know that we've got a number of visitors today as well. So thank you to everybody who's visiting. Among these actually are some members of my family and Bernadette's blushing. <laughs> so mom and dad, you wanna raise your hands? So you can embarrass them if you want later, everybody. <laughs> my, so my parents are here and then Michael and Bernadette are here and then little Scarlett is somewhere back there. But uh, yeah, so they're all here too. So thank you guys for making the trip up here today to share in our festival as well. And I hope you all have a very blessed day today and Thanks be to God, a wonderful week ahead as well. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Please join in the first and last verse of our closing hymn number 721. <laughs> 